Part four, how to use your VA loan while on active duty by someone on active duty. Welcome to my channel. My name is Ian. I'm your local realtor here in sunny San Diego, California. This segment, we're going to cover what to do after your offer gets accepted and you're in escrow. A brief overview of the contingencies that are in place to protect you and how we negotiate if something comes up and what not to do while in escrow. If you didn't watch the first three videos or you're not at that point where you're about to go into escrow or that far down your home buying journey, go back and watch them first. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can go check them out. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my San Diego real estate channel and follow me on Instagram for more real estate tips and tricks, video home tours, and upcoming local attractions. Also, if you have any specific questions or topics that you would like me to cover, just leave a comment below or shoot me a message on Instagram. Once we submit an offer to the seller, they can either accept it, decline it, or give us a counter offer. Let's just say our offer gets accepted by the first time. Congratulations, you are now in escrow. Now is game time. You have to be responsive and respond to all emails as quickly as possible because there's a timeline. There isn't really anything physically you're gonna to have to do besides doing the final walkthrough and possibly going to home inspection if you want to, but most importantly is reviewing and signing documents. Don't be afraid to ask questions as soon as they come up because that's what I'm here for and that's what my entire team is here for. You're gonna be getting a lot of emails from people, but most importantly from what's called a transaction coordinator, which is someone we agents hire to help handle all the documentation with the other party and to keep everyone accountable. Side note, if an agent tries to get you to pay their transaction coordinator, punch them in the face and come work with me. It's a service that does help you as a client, but it mostly helps us real estate agents stay on course and not miss any documentation while we're out there helping our other clients at the same time. One more side note that I forgot to cover. Do not, I repeat, do not buy anything or apply for any type of loan while you're in escrow. Technically, you shouldn't do anything after you get pre-approved for your mortgage. This can really mess up your pre-approval and your home buying journey, so just don't do it. Back to escrow. A large portion of the escrow process falls on the backs of the lenders. Like I said earlier, working with a good lender will save us so much pain and agony. That's another reason why I personally don't recommend Veterans United or any other commercial banks for the San Diego market. It's just too fast paced and it's hard to get in contact with those corporate lenders. A lender I work with can close a VA loan in under 17 days. Big banks take like a year. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but they take a long time. Next, we have to remove what are called contingencies by a certain time that we put in the original offer. If we don't, then the seller can back out of the deal and you lose your earnest money deposit. Don't confuse this with rushing inspections. If something comes up, you can easily ask for more time, but being negligent isn't an excuse for needing more time. Not signing paperwork fast enough, the lender dragging their feet, or whatever, isn't a good enough excuse. Contingencies are designed to protect you and your interests. The three main ones are the home inspection contingency, the appraisal contingency, and the loan contingency. Each one protects you in a different aspect. A quick overview would be that home inspections ensure that you're not buying something that has some huge hidden repair costs that are gonna break the bank once you move in. The appraisal contingency ensures that you're not getting a mortgage for a home that isn't worth how much you're borrowing. And for the VA loans, it also ensures it meets certain safety requirements. And the lastly, the loan contingency basically gives you a way out for some reason if you aren't able to secure the mortgage loan, like you lost your job or bought that damn Hellcat while you're in escrow. Don't do that. Or some other reason or situation that changes to the point that you can't get a loan anymore. You're not on the hook to pay cash. If you want me to go more in depth on each one, just message me or I can really do a whole video on contingency. If something comes up during the home inspection, we can either negotiate for repairs or back out. This is where we have to be strategic. If it's a safety requirement because we're using the VA loan, it's out of our hands and we have to request for repairs. Outside of that, we need to weigh the pros and cons. Does the issue bother you enough that you're willing to walk away from this home? Remember, we are asking for repairs and the seller does not have to comply. If there were a bunch of other offers on the property, the seller may choose to back out and go to a different one that won't request for repairs. This is not meant to scare you in any way. I'm just giving you perspective so you don't go crazy and trying to request that the grass gets mowed or something silly. But once again, if it's a safety issue, the VA requires it and it's just out of our hands and we have to request for that repair. The next major milestone in the escrow process is when the appraisal comes back. If the value the appraiser appraised the house at comes back at how much we put in the offer or above, good to go, we're walking some equity. If it comes in below, now we have to negotiate because that's the amount the bank is willing to loan you. Either we can pay out of pocket or we negotiate with the seller, but usually it's pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna let you put in an offer on a home that's so ridiculously priced that it's not going to appraise. And most decent listing agents won't even accept an offer for an amount that won't get appraised because they know they're just wasting their time and it's just gonna fall out of that. Well. So we got through all the inspections and the appraisal and now our loan officer is gonna have you sign the final loan documentation and give us what's called the clear to close. We still have to do a final walkthrough of the property to make sure nothing changed during the escrow, like them removing refrigerators or damaging the home or ensuring that the repairs were completed. Then escrow sets up the final closing documentation to be recorded with the county you can either go there and sign it or normally they just have a notary come to you and sign it. Then congratulations, you're now officially a homeowner. Not too crazy, right? As with all things, the setup and preparation makes the process so much easier. Getting all your ducks in a row first, preferably five to six months out, 
saves you all sorts of heartache and stress during the actual buying process. If you've been on the fence about using your VA loan entitlement or have other questions that I didn't cover, just shoot me a message. I'll go over whatever you want. I have all my social media, email, and contact information in the description below. I hope this video helps and shows you that using your VA loan isn't scary or really that difficult. Please save these videos and feel free to send them to whoever you know that needs to see them. And once again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Like this video if you learned something and subscribe if you found any sort of value and want more videos just like this. Thank you.